It's very nice to be here. Thank you so much, Ellie, and thank you to the department for inviting me to talk to you. Um, so, as I understand it, I've been asked here to tell you why teaching is a completely awesome job, and I do think it's an awesome job. I love it. Um, so, I'm going to do this in two parts. First of all, I'm going to tell you my story, how I became a teacher, because it's something I sort of fell into rather than something I planned to do. So, how I discovered my vocation from the Latin. Voco, yeah. Ha, ha, ha. No? Okay. Um, and secondly, I'm just going to enumerate for you all the things that I think um, that I discovered that I really loved about teaching when, when it came to the point. So the starting point for me, and hopefully for you too, is that you really love your subject. I'm assuming that most people who reach this point in a degree in ancient history, history or classics, isn't doing it because they're going to get, you know, a fantastic well-paid job somewhere down the line. They're doing it because they love it. That's how it started for me anyway. Um, and I did it despite the fact that I knew there was no long-term career plan, there was no nothing, I just fell in love with the subject. Um, and I did this um, in Year 11 when I studied ancient history. And my ancient history teacher, Mrs Irwin, was the most amazing woman. And I don't know if you've had this experience, but it's quite a common one that when I meet people for the first time and they ask me what I do and I tell them, they tell me that history was their favourite subject at school and their history teacher was amazing and they loved it. And as a history teacher, that just makes me beam. I just am so happy to hear that. And I think that, you know, that I'm one of those people now that my students remember and I've had that impact is something that's really, really meaningful. Um, so back to Mrs Irwin in year 11. She was an extremely colourful woman. She wore mad eyeshadow. She had 15 cats and they were called Hatshepsut and Augustus and Marcus Aurelius. She really loved her subject. She knew a lot about it and she was the most amazing storyteller. And that was it. She told stories and we just sat there and listened. It was the most incredible experience. And for me, that was kind of it, you know. She said the Graki and I was gone. It's like, this is the love of my life. I will never do anything else. And um, pretty much apart from having kids, I haven't. I, I went on and did a BA. I did honours. I did postgraduate work. And I didn't really think too much for most of that about what the future would hold, about jobs and everything. Maybe I was incredibly naive, but I just wanted to study history. And by the time I was doing postgraduate work, um, I suppose academia started to seem like a really attractive option. You know, they were just so all cool and clever, this elite group of amazing people. And it was going to be awesome. I was going to sit in libraries and do arcane research. And, you know, I was going to give conference papers and publish. It was, it was going to be great. And then, about eight years into my tertiary education, I was sitting in a library one day and I had an epiphany. I've written stuff this <laughs> underneath my epiphany because I was sitting there reading an obscure 19th century German commentary on fragmentary Greek history. And I, I literally snapped and thought, wow, this isn't fun. <laughs> I'm actually really not enjoying this. And not that I don't love research, I do. But sitting there day after day, doing the same thing, the isolation, it just wasn't my personality. I was just miserable. So I actually changed my degree to a master's, which was really fun because it was coursework. I got to do a whole variety of different things. I got to do research essays on a whole lot of different topics. I didn't have to worry about publishing any of them. You know, I could do it to my satisfaction and just move on. Um, so that was really, really rewarding. But it, it did leave up in the air the, um, the problem of a job, <laughs> which I still hadn't really thought about. So when I got back to Australia, um, I did re-enrol in a PhD, um, but at the same time I took on some tutoring at uni, and that was lots of fun. And I also got a maternity leave position teaching at a high school, at St Andrews Cathedral School. And that was a result of me just sending my CV to every private school I could think of, saying, this is who I am, do you have any casual work available? I thought, let's just see, let's give this a go. And it just so happened that they needed an ancient history replacement teacher. Um, and so that was it, and I was there for five years. Uh, I had kids in that time, so I've worked in a variety of capacities, if anyone has questions pertaining to that. Um, and look, I just, I just loved it. It was great. And like, um, sorry, I forgot your name. Kelly. Kelly. Kelly was saying, I can't agree more, that 
teaching something gives you a very different relationship to the knowledge and the learning um, than simply studying does. And um, for me, it was extremely rewarding. Um, and look, it, it's, it's not the easiest job. <laughs> Um, it involves personalities. You've got, you know, a room full of kids of varying stages of development. Um, and, you know, you have to negotiate those relationships. So that's, that's not always the easiest task. Um, whoever says that holding the attention of 25, 13-year-olds is lying, okay, it's not easy. <laughs> it's really, really hard. Um, and also, I think teaching now more than ever is, is a performance art. You have to get up there and you have to perform. Um, you can't, you know, rely on old-fashioned methods of discipline anymore. You really need to hold your audience, and, and that's how I think about it. And that's exhausting because you're doing it all day, okay? You, you're giving out all day. So that's why it's not the easiest job, but I've got to say that all of those things are apart from the 13-year-old students. Um, of <laughs> what I loved about it too. Um, that firstly, it's about relationships, okay? That in a high school setting, you're with these kids for sometimes six years. Um, you know, I had kids who I taught in year seven, who I taught again in year 10, who were there in year 11 and 12. And those relationships are just incredible. And you watch these, these boys and these girls go through puberty. You watch them become young men and women. Um, and that's, that's amazing. I loved that. That sort of sense of the pastoral that you get in a school is really amazing. Um, the performance aspect was another thing that I loved. So you might have picked up sitting in a library reading fragments of Greek historians was driving me mad because I like talking. So here was this amazing job where I got to get up and talk all day about history, which I loved. So it was just this perfect package. Um, and and the performance is great because, I mean, you, you need to tap into your personality, okay? You can be idiosyncratic, you can be a bit crazy, you, you draw on what you've got, what your strengths are, and you can push that into your teaching, and, and you see the results, you know? Um, so that's gratifying, feeling like I can actually bring that out in, in my job, you know? Not just something I do in a party, but something that I can do every day in my job. Um, the pedagogy is really rewarding too. Um, you have quite close relationships as students. Um, and I've always said, I think, with really, really good students, there's not a lot you can do. I mean, you can't really stuff them up and you're not going to really make them improve. They're going to do good no matter what. But it's the mid-range students and that's where you can really have an impact. And that's amazing to see a kid go from like a band four to a band five. Um, you know, and to know that you've made an impact on that, that you've had an impact on them improving. Um, and the final thing that I just think is, and probably the most important thing about ancient history is the storytelling. Um, so that gets back to what I was saying about my ancient history teacher. She was a storyteller. And I think as historians, it, that's in essence what we do. We tell stories. We tell the coolest, most amazing stories about the past. And we are part of a generation that is passing that knowledge on. Okay, we are part of the preservation of cultural capital, and I feel that very strongly. You can make a story about anything in history. One of my favourite topics in the HSC syllabus was part of Pompeii. I don't know, do you guys did anyone did Pompeii? Water supply. It was so cool. It was the best lesson ever. That sounds boring, but you know, I made it into a story and it was amazing. Just so much fun. So it's that aspect of storytelling. Um, and I think that um, it's about, because as historians we tell stories, we're communicating. And that's where it gets really gratifying. Um, that I feel like we're part of a really, really human process. And look, the thing about secondary studies is that um, at some point everyone's going to study history in high school. So you are going to be part of teaching something that everyone in the state is going to learn about. Not all of those people will go on. We do have really high enrolments at, in New South Wales in history at university. But in terms of reaching the widest possible audience, you're going to do that at a secondary level. Okay? And I get back to that point that I made where people say to me, my history teacher was awesome, I loved history, it was the best subject ever. Okay? You can be part of doing that, making, making that history reach that wide an audience. Um, so that's kind of why I think history is really, really cool and teaching. 
I think that's everything I had to say. If you want to know about the actual practice of teaching in a classroom, I mean, I've been doing casual recently because I've got a young family, so I don't know, there might be others here who are teaching currently who are going to be better able to sort of speak to that. But that's how I fell into the profession and, and that's why I decided that I was going to stay a teacher because, yeah, it was cool. 